the past few weeks, we've been following the efforts to unpack the fuel at the Red Hill site. And joining us now to discuss the latest updates, Rear Admiral John Wade, commander of Joint Task Force Red Hill. Thank you, sir, so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, people are going to want to know, what is the status so far? You've been busy called, doing call, what's called unpacking. What is that? So unpacking is removing the fuel from the pipelines in the Red Hill facility. We started last Tuesday. We're almost done. We have completely unpacked or removed all the JP5 fuel and the F24 fuel. Those are aviation fuels. And we have about 80 to 100,000 gallons left of marine diesel, which fuels our ships. So that's what we're getting after today. And to give people an idea of the scope, it's almost a million gallons up through today. Yeah? As of last night, uh, we were just about at a million gallons. So we're, we're almost there. Okay. Yeah. This is just the start, though. Can you help people to explain to people what happens next, about how much is left in the tanks when you hit that big phase? Sure. So we're not done with unpacking it. So even though it's only 80 to 100,000 100, gallons, I want to get that done with precision. But we should be done either today or tomorrow. But then we start the next phase, which is preparing for the overall defueling effort, which is uh, over 100, 100 million gallons. We're going to be working with the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Health, the regulators at the federal and state level, to get the defueling plan approved. It's not yet approved. But then once it's approved, uh, I will work in partnership with those two organizations and all other stakeholders to see if we can move that timeline left. And then we'll do iterative uh, training, rehearsals, and uh, you know make sure that we're ready. So here we are in 2022. The timeline to finish draining the tanks is pegged at about mid-2024. Right. I think you touched on it a little bit, if we can go over. If you could move a million gallons in a week, why can't you move 80 to 100 million in 80 to 100 weeks? That's a, that's a fair question, and I've received that question quite a bit. Uh, again, uh, you know, the state of Hawaii has issued an emergency order, first came out in December, uh, and then updated in May, and it has mandated a third-party engineering firm to come into the complex and to look at the pipelines, the gauges, the pumps, uh, you know, everything, the foundations, and uh, identify uh, through this assessment areas that need to be uh, worked on, either repairs, modifications, or enhancements, to reduce risk. Has it ever been done before? Isn't there a man, some, some may say, isn't there a manual you can just open and turn the valve? Yeah, so in, in the military, we have certainly shut down fuel storage facilities, but not with the scale and scope and uh, nothing inside of a hill or underground. Well, it's not just an engineering or mechanical issue. This is also a rebuilding of trust. How does the Navy do that with their our military ohana and the surrounding community yeah sure well uh it's it's one action at a time i believe and it's also through uh consistent communications transparency and i think the first step i i believe that a lot of great people have been working hard but the establishment of this joint task force singularly focused on safely and expeditiously removing the fuel uh and then continuous updates so Building trust is not only actions, but consisting in communications and then listening, and that's what I'm committed to do. What have you found in this short period of time? You mentioned, you know, either be, being a little behind schedule or hoping to be ahead of schedule. Right. Have you learned some lessons already in this week that you'll already apply to the next big phases? Yeah, I really appreciate the question because we've learned a number of lessons, and I, I'm happy to say they're, they're, they're all positive. So first of all, I think the preparation and the training really proved to be uh, so critically important. Uh, the other thing is formality. So we worked aggressively with the Department of Health and the Environmental Protection Agency. Again, they hold us to a standard because they're regulators, but continuous communications, answering their questions, having them come on site, look at the risk mitigations that we did to prevent fuel from getting into the aquifer. Uh, yes, we had planned to be done by yesterday. We're in our last phase. Uh, we have to pull the fuel at, at this low point, so we're using pumps. And the capacity we thought would be at a higher rate is a little bit slower. You know, not one drop. And that's what I owe the community and the environment. Not one drop. That's my goal. That. Yes. Anything else you want the folks at home and watching to know? 
Yeah, I would just like to tell the community that uh, I'm absolutely honored to be the task force commander. My team and I understand the enormity and the importance of this mission. We're absolutely committed to get this right. And uh, I look forward to working with you as we move forward because this affects all of us. And I'm proud to serve the community here. And uh, I just thank you for the opportunity to talk to you all. Thank you. And thank you for answering our questions candidly as well. Thanks. Bridget